let's talk about the enzyme catalysis and the different ways an enzyme is catalyzing and converting its substrate into the product. Now in this case if you look at stickase which is a hypothetical enzyme it is a very good example of how uh, the, all these interactions of substrate and enzyme take place. Now if you look at here it comes with a substrate okay, and it also provides the transition state of the substrate. During the transition state of the substrate it is modified a little bit and this is influenced by the presence of the enzyme to create the transition state. Then finally it will be converted into the product. Now if you look at the interaction of the enzyme which is denoted here with the green color with the substrate they will not bind that much specifically there. Now once they are involved if, if, if the enzyme just bind to the substrate then there will be no further reaction. So the enzyme and substrate will interact with themselves. How? Let us look at here. This is the enzyme and here comes the substrate. Now if you look at here, the stickase and the matrix attachment region was shaped. It is not directly with the substrate into a complementary relationship. But because of their intermediate state which will form after the interaction of enzyme with substrate where the transition state of the substrate start to form, this is the particular type of uh, configuration that helps to complement each other. And in that case, this enzyme substrate binding domain are mostly deep into the molecule. And this is the big advantage of how they convert the substrate through the transition state into the product. So enzyme not only recognizes the substrate but also induces the formation of the transition state that helps them to break the substrate into the product. Let us move to the next part. If we look at the nature of the enzyme catalysis, what we will find? The general catalyst's main function is to provide a surface space which we can see now with this yellow colored section that is denoted. This is the enzyme catalytic surface. The reactant will be added above this surface and this surface can provide the convenience of space and makes it easier for the reactants into the product. So this is the surface that we see. Now this is substrate A, this is substrate B and our job is to catalyze substrate A and B into the product. Now during the process of reactants into the products there will be an interaction between them and uh, this is the most difficult part to achieve during the catalysis process because this surface stabilizes the transition state of both the substrates that are involved for making the product. So here enzyme is the same that activity to provide a catalytic pocket. This pocket will stabilize the transition state in between both the substrates in the middle and that is the formation of the transformed state and once the transformed state is formed then both of them will be linked together both the substrates will be linked together and they will form the product. Now formation of enzymes can make this transition easier this, this formation of this uh, slight change in the substrate and enzyme interactions uh, makes this transition easier. And they also need some energy known as the activation energy. But the activation energy required for joining A and B together when it is interacting with the catalytic surface is less and very low. And that is the actual most important part played by the enzyme for any kind of reactions it is involved with. But note that the catalytic surface alone is not enough. In this case catalytic enzymes, an example like antibodies if you take can illustrate the problem in much more details. Let us move on to the next part. Here we will see the stabilization of the transition state and why exactly enzyme is important for any kind of chemical reaction. Now here we can see the graph where it goes like in x-axis reaction directions, in y-axis we have the energy change. And if we start with the substrate that is S that substrate when it is interacting with the enzyme, it forms the enzyme substrate complex. 
Now we will see the situation when we have only the substrate without any enzyme involved in the reaction and then we will also see the substrate when the enzyme is present. So now you see this is a state where the substrate only is involved and in making products without any enzyme. If you go the second part this ST is referred to the transition state of the substrate. Now if we drag it here we will find out some energy that is the energy required without any kind of catalysis that is the amount of energy needed for the reaction to proceed forward from substrate to the product. Now if we do the same situation and look at the how this substrate will behave and how the reaction will behave in the presence of enzyme this is the enzyme substrate complex that is formed depicted with the green line in the graph and EST depicts the transition state of the substrate uh, with the enzyme interaction which is lower than the transition state of the substrate and energy level. So this is the enzyme product complex and then finally they form the product. Now if you look at the energy required for getting the enzyme substrate transition state is much lower depicted with this green bar. It's much lower. And this is what the catalysis actually means. Presence of enzymes helps to lower the help to lower the activation energy and also helps to get the transition state with minimal amount of energy. Now what is the difference? The difference is due to the presence because they provide a favorable environment the enzymes. Substrates can easily involve and interact with the active site because they provide the active surface where it can interact and mediate and reach their transition state much easier. Now if we look at the active site in much more details, we will be able to understand what exactly going on there. Okay. Now the question is why energy required to reach transition state is lower in the active site and it is not lower in any other places while the, while the reaction is going on. Now if we look at here, enzyme activity is like a magic pocket. After you put reactants, it can turn into product. So we already know that this pocket can decrease the activation energy of the reaction intermediates. But the question is how? That's what we are going to study now. So there are few possible mechanisms hypothetically given uh, which can help uh, to explain how enzymes perform uh, the change of this activation energy and what is the actual requirement of an enzyme in a chemical reaction. So let's assume this is the enzyme with, the, with, with uh, some active site that is a cleft that is shown here. And we see this is uh, a magic pocket that I told you earlier. Now the question is why this behaves like a magic pocket. So let's look at each of those uh, different types of mechanisms that are involved. The first mechanism, it stabilizes the transition. In the transition state structure of the molecule, they often have a very high portion of the charge and place it in the catalytic pocket. Just decorated with local high charge can neutralize this group and thus stabilize the transition state. So let's say this is the substrate. With the help of this charge units, they can stabilize. Second is, uh, it can expel water. In a solution of water, many ion binding of the interface, uh, they make any kind of interference uh, between the interaction and binding of substrate with the enzyme catalytic site. But this enzyme catalytic site is present in a way that it keeps away the water or water content. So most of these catalytic pockets can isolate the water molecules and ions very smoothly that can help uh, the substrate to be properly interacting with the enzyme and that helps the process of catalysis. Third is the reactive groups. The activated amino acid groups mostly present in this active site with some spatial arrangement. For example, some cases functional groups comes in like serine which contains OH or hydroxyl group there as an impact of other nearby group. For example, it can be histidine or H+. So there are different groups can be present and that can provide negative or positive effects uh, which can also help in electrostatic interactions and proper ion 
interactions with the substrate to properly place them. Now the fourth type of mechanism is the coenzymes because the active area often kind of accompanied by different type of other chemical factors and molecules and those chemical factors act as a coenzymes and the enzymes have those coenzyme binding cleft which can directly interact with uh, the substrate enzyme complex to make it much stabilized and uh, for completion of the reaction it's much more important and actually if you look at the cell and cellular processes you will see a lot of coenzymes involved with almost all the different large chemical and biochemical pathways like glycolysis, Krebs cycle and so on. Now if you look the importance of this cleft and binding site as, I, as we saw that there are different mechanisms provided by this magic pocket that we have listed here. But the question is this active site is deeper and it's much more deeper even than the antibody binding and, and, and that is a huge important assumption because the antigen antibody binding site is really a large group but this sites in enzymes are even more bigger. So if you look at here antigen binding site on antibody binds to antigen complementally. So no further reaction will occur because once antigen is attached to the antibody uh, that will be completely closed system the process will be halted. But instead if active site on enzymes are recognized substrate but actually complementarily fits to the transition state it, it does not directly fit with the actual shape of the antigen while it's fitting with uh, the complementary and it fits with the transition state. So the enzymes are much better oriented and designed to fit with the transition state of any of their substrate. They will not properly interact with the actual normal structure of the substrate. That provides them the ability to properly place uh, the enzyme uh, with, the, with the substrate, properly place the substrate and then convert it into the product. So that is the biggest difference between enzymes and antibodies and it lies the region of the target of the two configurations that are not the same. Okay. So in this case of enzymes, not only of the matrix attachment, it will all be activated pocket included like matrix into uh, other sort of structures. And the transient state, that's what uh, the idea of enzymes, they start to stabilize the transient state uh, so that it could be easily converted into the product. Now the final thing about uh, uh, assumption that we talked earlier that the active site avoids the influence of water. This has some more importance than it uh, normally sounds like. The presence of water is everywhere inside the cell, inside the living organisms. So the active area as we talked about, it's deep. It's deeper than the antibody cleft. So there's much effort, like water will not take much of an effort to involve with this deep cleft. And if water is attached to those areas, it can halt the catalytic activities. The catalytic processes can be bypassed for that. So as to avoid that hydrated interface, we have this enzyme with uh, the cleft active site is depicted. Now what we know is that the substrate can bind with proper charge interactions between them. So once they have a proper interaction and this interaction is not a single point interaction. Most of the time the, and the, the enzyme and substrate interacted with multiple surface interactions. And these interactions properly place the substrate and the whole active site and the active cleft which is deep is kind of occupied by the substrate. So the water molecules don't get the entry to the active site that prevents the process of blocking the activity of the enzyme. That's another importance of how that uh, enzyme substrate complex and enzyme catalytic takes place. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that because your subscription keeps me going to, to create so many videos for you. Thank you.